Salam sejahtera, selamat petang, good evening, Kron Banwa and Maganang Dabi, everyone. Good evening to our panelists today, Mr. Ahmad Mujahid Ahmad Nizam, third year linguistic student from Faculty of Social Science and Humanities, Ms. Kaura Nakajima, researcher advisor at the Embassy of Japan in Malaysia, Ms. Maria Rika Duran Babanto, first year scholar student of Regional Development Studies, Toyo University, Japan, Ms. Nurul Hidayah Muhammad Noor, Researcher Officer of Southeast Asia Regional Center for Counterterrorism, Ms. Stephanie Tang, Representative and Communications Facilitator at Global Education Center, Musashi University, Tokyo, Japan. Ms. And lastly, Mr. Yuki Nishiori, Senior Malaysian Studies at Tokyo University of Foreign Studies, Japan. Our moderator for today is Mr. John Sebastian Tungalu, a final year teaching English as a second language TESOL student at Faculty of Education UKM Malaysia. Our UKM Global teams today is Associate Professor Dr. Abdul Latif Ahmad, Director of UKM Global and Dr. Tanwar. University representatives from Malaysia and hello everyone across the world. Ladies and gentlemen, honorable guests and participants from across the world who joined us today. Welcome to the UKM Global webinar series supported by Toshiba International Student with the topic the International Mobility Experience of Students from Malaysia and Japanese Universities. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Nick Sarah Adina Abdul Aziz from University of Malaysia, Malaysia, and I'll be your MC for today's webinar. Ladies and gentlemen, one of the most notable attributes of the internalization of higher education institution has always been the impact of international student mobility. Today, students' involvement in international mobility program can enhance graduate attributes that are highly valued by future employers. The global pandemic has challenged HGIs to reconceptualize physical student mobility. Hence, alternative forms of mobility are being introduced by the HGIs across the world by virtual or hybrid mode. So our panel today will discuss this matter based on their personal experiences in either Malaysia or Japan universities and how it has impacted their lives. To begin today's webinar, I would like to introduce our moderator for today's webinar, Mr. John Sebastian Tungalu, or formerly known as Mr. John. He strongly believes that when there is a will, there shall always be a way, and his life quote is, to be an impact is by being one. So welcome, Mr. John, the screen is now yours. Hello, Sarah. Thank you very much, Sarah, for that very fruitful and amazing introduction, our MC, our beautiful MC today. So, hello, everyone. Um, good evening. Selamat sejahtera, konbanwa, ngadang gabi, and kopi bosian. 
Welcome, welcome, welcome everyone to the sixth series of the UKM Global Webinar organized by the International Relations Center of UKM, supported by Toshiba International Foundation. Thank you very much, everyone, for taking the time to join us this evening, be it via Zoom or even on Facebook Live. Watashina Namaewa John Des. My name is John, and it is indeed an honor to be moderating tonight's session with all of you today. The theme for tonight's webinar is the international experience of students from Malaysian and Japanese universities. In tonight's webinar, we hope to discuss the student's perspective and experience of studying and undergoing an international student mobility program via both the physical and virtual platforms and how it has impact them, in, impacted them as a student and also as a working adult. So before we get into the discussions and sharing sessions tonight, allow me to briefly introduce our panelists this evening. We have one, two, three, four, five, six beautiful and handsome panelists this evening from Malaysia, Japan, and the Philippines. Who shall win tonight? No, just kidding. All right. So the first panelist today is Miss Tiffany Tang. Tiffany graduated with a degree in linguistics. At the National, from the National University of Malaysia, UKM, at Faculty of Social Sciences and Humanities, FSSK. So if you're from FSSK, Ms. Tiffany is your senior. And she obtained her master's, uh, she's a master's degree holder in Peace and Conflict Global Studies, where she obtained from the Tokyo University of Foreign Studies, TUFS, Japan. She is currently attached with Musashi University in the Global Education Center as a representative and communications facilitator, where she is involved directly in preparing students to mobility to more than 30 countries worldwide, ladies and gentlemen. Hello, Tiffany. How are you doing? Good evening. Konbanwa. Hi, thanks, John, for that uh, really concise introduction. Hi, everyone. My name is Tiffany. Really good to see all of you. All right, thank you, Tiffany. Moving on, next, we, let's move on to the land of the rising sun. We have Mr. Yuki Nishiori. Yuki Nishiori, or formerly known as Hafiz, who has a Malay name Hafiz, is a senior student at the Tokyo University of Foreign Studies, TUFS, and he joined a mobility yeah. program for one year at the University of Brunei. And currently, um, yeah, he once conducted a Jap he was an exchange student in UKM and was in assisting in the Japanese language literature cl classes at PPBL at the Center for Research in Language and Linguistics and also in UKM Permata Pintar. Hello Hafiz, apa kabar? Baik. Yes. Selamat malam. Selamat malam. Uh, I'm Yuki Nishiori from Japan. Yes, thank you very much, Yuki, for being with us this evening. Yuki was also a member of the administrative board of co in 2018 and was the head of several clubs and student activities. Our third panelist this evening is Ms. Nurul Hidayah Mohad, Muhammad Noar. Hidayah is a research officer at the Southeast Asia Regional Center for Counterterrorism under the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Malaysia. Before that, she was a teaching assistant at the Center for Media and Information Warfare Studies, CW, CMIWS, at University Technology Mara UITM, where she did her master's in Media and Information Warfare Studies. Hello, Hidaya. Apa kabar? Good evening. Kabar baik. Hi, John. Hi, everyone. Yes, thank you for joining us, Hidaya. Have you eaten dinner? Yes, and thank you so much, John, for the kind introduction. Most welcome. Doitashimaste, yes. Okay. Next, let's move on to the next panelist. A be very beautiful from Miss um, Kaoru Nakajima. For information, for everyone like uh, Yuki, Kaoru also has a Malay name. And would you like to introduce yourself briefly to us, Kaoru? All right, sure. Uh, selamat, selamat malam. Nama saya Kaoru. My name is Kaoru from Japan. Yeah. Thank you for your introduction. Thank you very much, Kaoru, for being with us this evening. And you, um, yeah. Moving on to our next panelist uh, from UKM, Malaysian, 
uh, Mr. Ahmad Mujahid Ahmad Nizam, who is a third year student majoring in linguistics at the National University of UKM, born and raised in Pahang Darul Makmur, and he's currently an exchange student. Um, do, yeah, in Tokyo University of Foreign Studies, TUFS, and yeah, we are looking forward to look to hear your sharing later, Mujahid. How are you, Mujahid? All right, thank you, John, for the light, nice introduction. I hope everyone would enjoy today's talk. Thank you. Thank you, Mujahid. And then finally, we have all, all the way from the Philippines, Miss Maria Rika Duran Babanto. Maria is a first year college student at one of Japan's most prominent universities, Toyo University. Magandang gabi, Maria. Magandang gabi, Sebastian. And for everyone who's joining, especially from the Philippines, a lot of people are joining from the Philippines. Hello, and thank you for um, joining us today. Yes, thank you so much. Maraming salamat, Maria. So, yeah, we have now that we have met all of our panelists, we will now look... We are now, I'm sure everyone is looking forward and excited to hear sharings from all of our panelists, our six panelists this evening. And without further ado, let's proceed with our first panelist to share her experience, uh, Miss Tiffany, Tiffany Tang. Tiffany, the screen is yours. Thank you so much. Um, please let me know if you're able to see my screen. Is that okay? Yes, we can see it, right. Tiffany. Thank you so much. Um, so once again, uh, thank you for having me. I just like to acknowledge um, Dr. Latif, Mr. Hafiz, Mr. Haikal, um, the amazing team at UKMIRC, uh, members of the floor, and also people who have just flooded the chat box um, with so much warm greetings. Thank you so much for having us. Um, so let me begin with um, my background. So these are the few um, countries and uh, places that I've lived and studied. So let's begin with my background from UKM. I'm very proud to call myself an alumni from UKM. Uh, my background is in linguistics in Bahasa Melayu, Bahasa Malaysia. Um, so I graduated in 2018. Uh, but during that uh, period, I was able to um, go to a few different countries. So I'm um, in 2016, I spent about three months in Romania um, at volunteering and um, teaching English to some of the local kids. Um, following that in the same year as well, I was, um, I had this amazing, amazing opportunity from um, the IRC to attend this global student leadership program in Daegu, South Korea uh, for the summer. And um, also in, in the same year, I departed uh, for Japan for, a, uh, for an international student exchange program with Tokyo University of Foreign Studies for a year. And um, after that, I returned to Malaysia, completed my studies. Um, thankfully, I didn't have to extend my studies. I was able to um, do my credit transfer very successfully with the help of my professor. And um, I was awarded the Dharma Siswa Scholarship. Um, to study in Ugris Samarang, um, Indonesia. And uh, I've just recently uh, graduated from my master's in peace and conflict studies um, from Tubbs as well. So let me just um, continue with some pictures um, just to help you to get to know me a little bit better. So this is the photo of my graduation uh, from UKM. Um, my volunteer program, I was, I was able to share a lot about Malaysia. Um, I had this Kue Bahulu in my hands and um, people in Romania love it. Uh, my program um, under Tokyo University of Foreign Studies. Um, and during this time, I had um, the JASU scholarship. So that really helped. Uh, my Dharma Siswa program in Indonesia was mainly focused on language and cultural exchange. Um, my entrance ceremony at Tufts in 2019. And also here I'm standing with my supervisor uh, for my thesis um, and uh, graduated in fall of 2021. Um, of course, I had to include this, um, some of uh, my favorite people at UCAM GIRC. Um, yeah, um, I'm also here pictured with uh, Mr. Chris um, uh, Some of you may know um, the ambassador. Um, and then, of course, Dr. Yaz, Dr. Latif, and some of the exchange students. Um, 
to which we have um, experienced bringing them around Bangi Selengo. And um, here's my involvement right now for um, Musashi University as a communications facilitator. So I do help um, these Japanese students from um, their undergrad to about fourth year of their university um, to help them, you know, improve their English and sharing uh, my experiences abroad. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. You can always connect with me um, on these platforms. Um, but yeah, I look forward to some of the questions you may have for me later, but that's all for me. Thank you. Thank you very much, Tiffany. I'm sure all of our audience, uh, we're all quite, I'm also quite jealous. That you're able to travel, you're able to live through the normal life, if I would say. And yeah, it has, it, has, it, has, it, it has been two years that we were not able to travel and the pandemic has really affected um, physical mobility. And yeah, we'll get into that later. We'll share later. And yeah, thank you again, Tiffany. And moving on, let's be, before we move on to our next panelist, uh, this, this is me reminding all of you, our audience members, you can impose your questions in the chat box, be it uh, in Zoom or Facebook Live and they shall be addressed in the discussion during the Q&A session um, later at the end of our webinar session. All right, everyone. So moving on, let's move on to our second panelist, panelist kedua kita dari Jepun, Mr. Yuki Nishiyori Yuki, Hafiz Yuki. Yes, kita mempersilahkan Hafiz Yuki for his sharing session. Yes, Hafiz, the screen is yours. I believe Hafiz it might be experiencing technical difficulties at the moment. So we'll come back to Hafiz later on. Let's move on to our next panelist, our third panelist, Hidayah, Ms. Nurul Hidayah Muad Noar, who is a research officer at the Southeast Asia Regional Center for Counterterrorism. Hidayah, the screen is yours. Thank you, John. All right, I'll just share my screen, yeah? Yes, you may. All right, here we go. Can you see my slides? Yes, perfect. All right, um, so maybe I'll just start off by introducing myself. Um, but before that, I would like to say thank you to UCAM Global for inviting me. Um, also, I'd just like to note that um, when Encik Hafiz uh, reached out to me and he asked whether I'm available for the, the webinar, I, I, my answer was available and I'm always looking forward um, you know, to talk to people at the UCAM Global and just overall you know, meeting everyone that um, I would say very close to me. Um, yeah, so maybe just to start off, uh, my name is Nurul Hidayah and I am a, an alumni of, UK, um, of University of Kebangsaan Malaysia. I hold a degree in um, social science, political science. So I'm also from Fakulti Science Social dan Kemanusiaan, FSSK. Um, yeah, I graduated in 2017. So I, I can safely say that that's about no less than five years that I've left UKM. So that, that's quite a, quite a number. Um, so yeah. Right, so if we can talk about um, where it all started, I would say it all started with an inbound program, which uh, I would say quite underrated. Uh, um, you know, people usually um, aim big and they want to go outside. But um, uh, this inbound program, specifically this um, UCAM Global um, GSMP, um, have a very special place in my heart because I believe this is where it all started for me personally. Um, and I remember the uh, motto or the tagline for that program was that building bridges for international understanding and friendship. And um, till today, I believe that is true. Um, and uh, one of those things that I, I think about and whenever I, you know, I reach out to some of the friends that I went to mobility, um, like the Mexicans and uh, people from Hong Kong, from Korea, uh, I think that this international understanding and friendship were really it's, it's really there, you know? And maybe I can talk also about, you know, what happened following that opportunity. Um, I went to Japan, uh, uh, just a short one, uh, I think about two weeks. Uh, I went for a study and visit Japan's modernization and post-war experience. So that's a lot of learning about the war and peace and conflict. 
And at that point of time, I was, you know, was a political science student. So of course it was, um, it was a really intriguing course, um, uh, I would say. And then it opened up to another opportunity uh, where I learned about the, so you know about the model United Nations. Um, so the ASEAN, um, so ASEAN is trying to, you know, introduce ASEAN model meeting as well. So they had this, um, second ASEAN Foundation model ASEAN meeting in Laos. So that's uh, most, uh, that's all of us is from UKM there in the, in the second picture, but from different faculties. So we've got people from Faculty of Law, we've got Faculty of Economics, and then um, from Social Sciences uh, and also Science. Um, and then I think towards the end of um, my third year, or perhaps um, when I was going to my third year, I did uh, a student body. Uh, I, I was a student body for the new Colombo plan, Australia to Malaysia, um, ETM Malaysia, which um, as you can see, actually like all these three activities of uh, three programs, um, they are diverse in discipline, I would say. So there's like history, there's also like government. And I think for new Colombo plan is that that's the time when I met Dr. Tano and imagine a political science student learning about geology. So that was something interesting for me. Um, and then right after UKM, I still um, kept in touch with um, friends I made through ASEAN. So we went for the ASEAN Foundation Training of Trainers in Jakarta. And then we came back from Jakarta, we gathered some more and, you know, um, had programs uh, to create uh, ASEAN awareness and reach out to school and universities. And if we talk about what's going on right now, um, I am currently a research officer um, at the Southeast Asia Regional Center for Counterterrorism, or also known as CIASAT. Um, yeah, so I work a lot with youth as well. Um, and of course, um, foreign counterparts, uh, you know, just looking into how we can um, exacerbate um, the influence and threats of violent extremism. And yeah, but uh, this is something that perhaps we can look to later on um, during your discussion. So I think I'll end my presentation with that, John. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Hidayah. If I were to ask you uh, right now, throughout your years in UKM, how many yeah. countries have you visited so far? Um, just three, I would say. Three, which are Laos. Um, Laos. Um, Japan and Jakarta, I think. Indonesia, Indonesia, right. yeah, yes. Ah, I wish I could be like you, Hidayah. All of us actually. Your time will come. One, it it will, it will. Yes, thank you so much, Hidayah. Thank yeah. you very much. Moving on to our next panelist, we will have from the land of the rising sun. Ms. Kauru Nakajima, or better known, or her Malay name is Suraya. So Ms. Kauru, or Suraya, is currently working for the Embassy of Japan in Malaysia, based in Malaysia, as a researcher and advisor in the Public Relations Department to promote Japan in Malaysia. So without further ado, presenting to you, Kauru or Suraya. Hi. Hi. Thank you very much, John, for your wonderful introduction. And also, thank you very much, everyone, for having me for this uh, wonderful, uh, yes, wonderful event. So let me share my screen. Um, can you see my screen right now? Hi. Yes, we can. Hi. Arigato. So, uh, let me introduce again. My name is Kaoru. My Malay name and uh, Namamura Yusaya Suraya. So let me uh, talk about my background first. Then after that, I um, uh, well, I will share the um, experience in UKM. Then after that, I will talk about what I will learn, uh, what I learned uh, from the study in UKM, then how it affected my life. So first of all, uh, actually, I am uh, from Hitotsubashi University, which is located in Tokyo, in Japan. So my major is uh, basically social science. Then um, I graduated as master of social science, um, more particularly cultural anthropology. Um, I'm not sure everyone knows um, cultural anthropology, but um, 
cultural anthropology is mainly for um, how to say, exploring the new culture, religion. So yeah, the cultural and religious study basically. So then uh, during the uh, master in Hitotsubashi University, I chose, I decided to come to UKM to learn Malay language, Bahasa Mulayu in Atma, which is Alamdan Tamadun Mulayu in UKM. Uh, which is because um, my, my study, my research topic was about Malaysian society because I am really interested in the um, diversity in Malaysia, which is very different from Japanese situation. So I chose uh, Malaysia as my research topic. Then I really wanted to learn Malay language because it is crucial to understand the uh, society. Okay. So then my current job is a um, researcher advisor for Embassy of Japan in Malaysia. So right now I'm here, I'm in KL. Um, I'm very happy for this opportunity. Then I am in charge of public relations for Japan and uh, Embassy of Japan in Malaysia. So what I do right now is to promote Japan uh, to many more and more um, Malaysian people. So I am communicating with like Berita Hariam, uh, Free Marisa Today, FMT, which is um, which are very important media uh, organization in in Japan. Uh, sorry, in Malaysia. So uh, yeah, those kind of like uh, articles, newspapers, TV are of course important media uh, for for to share the information. But yeah, of course, social media is very important. Um, so I also managing uh, this type of Facebook of uh, Embassy of Japan in Malaysia. Then we just start the Twitter account, official Twitter account of our ambassador, um, Takahashi Katsuhiko, uh, who is ambassador of Japan to Malaysia. So please follow them. So yeah, this is my job currently in KL. So what I um, experienced in UKM is, yeah, of course I wanted to learn Malay language. So languages, English also Malay language and religions, um, most, especially Islam. And then, yeah, so this is the um, photo for in Atoma, UKM. So I, experienced a lot, uh, food, the tudom, and this kind of like traditional dances with international students in UKM. And also I was seeing the traditional, um, what is that, the traditional um, stuff, sorry, I, I forget anything, but then this is also the uh, one thing in UKM. Then I was also talking about something uh, in UKM for radio. Then I tried badminton in UKM also. So I did try everything first, yes. So those experiences um, really are affecting my life totally. Actually UKM did change my life largely. So I gained a lot of friends then, which is the, my strong connection and attachment to Malaysian society. So even though I finished my master, I still am here in KL. I really want to do something to Malaysia and Japan. And also I learned um, the passion to try first, dive into and explore a new world. And also I really understand how important the respect to any people is. Yes, so this is my story so far. Thank you very much for listening. Terima kasih banyak-banyak, Suraya. Thank you very much, uh, arigato gozaimasu. Thank you for that wonderful sharing, Kaoru. I, I agree with you that social media is very, very important, especially in this day and age where we are very digitalized and mm. we are living through a pandemic. This is how 
um, we keep connected with one another. And mm-hmm. even when we, when we go for mobility programs or even short-term mobility programs all around the world, we meet them and when we say farewell, the only means of keeping in touch with them is via social media. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah, I cannot deny that social media is very, very important. And it, it had social media even has its um, disadvantages. So we need to know how to mm-hmm. use it um, efficiently and properly. Once again, thank you, Suraya. Sama-sama. Yes, thank you for also wearing the baju kurung Yay, in tonight's <laughs> uh, webinar. Mm. All right, so moving on to our um, next panelist, our very own from UKM, Mujahid Ahmad Mujahid Ahmad Nizam, who is a third year student from the Faculty of Social Sciences and Humanities pursuing linguistics, similar course to Tiffany, I believe. And he is currently an exchange student um, going into one year next month at TUFS2. So with that, I would like to in- call upon Mujahid to share his experience and his insights. The screen is yours, Mujahid. All right. Thank you, John. I have actually, I have already gone through the one year, but okay, thank you. <laughs> I'm going to share my screen right now. Okay. Can everyone see it? Yes, we can, Mujahid. Okay, thank you. Okay, Assalamualaikum. A very good evening, I greet to everyone, especially the organizer, UKM Global and Toshiba International Foundation for inviting me as a panelist to give a bit insight about my experience joining a student exchange program in Tokyo University of Foreign Studies, Japan. All right, um, first of all, I would like to introduce myself a bit. Just again, you know, my name is Ahmad Mujahid Ahmad Nizam. I'm a third year linguistic student and I joined the online exchange program since last year for around one year. All right, so if we are comparing my experience with the previous students who have joined and done the exchange program before, I could say that mine was full of hopes of being able to study abroad in Japan. But it's like the five stages of grief, if I could see so myself, which started with denial. I say that, yes, I will, I will go to Japan, even though there's pandemic that have been hitting this the world for around first one, two years, and then it ended with acceptance. I sincerely can say that my experience studying online is one of kind of experience, and it shows that the possibilities of other people doing it in the future. All right. Okay, okay. doing it in the future, especially when our generation and the next future generation are heading towards a world of metaverse, a completely online world, if I so if I say so myself, all right. So um, based on my experience studying online at TFS, I could point out some pros and cons of joining online exchange program. The pros that I have listed are time flexibility. I could manage to cram or what I would rather say, um, strategically place my uh, schedule between the degree subjects in UKM and my subjects that I've taken in TUFS. If I were doing the traditional way, I mean like the physical way of exchange program, I would not would not allow to do so, of course. And the time difference between Malaysia and Japan is not that harsh if compared to my other acquaintances, which are from the European and American countries. They would have to burn the midnight all just so that they could attend classes at 1, 2 a.m. due to the due to the time differences. And other than that, the env- environment is holistic, which I could say that the educators in TUFS are really top-notch, extremely professional, yet at the same time friendly in a teacher-student kind of way. My classmates are truly diligent when it comes to project work, which we had done three times during my studies. I'm glad that I'm glad that even though there is a physical barrier due to the circumstances of the pandemic we were facing, we still could march forward until the last day of program. All right, so meanwhile, some of the cons or the problem that I have faced during my studies are the requirement to do this type of exchange program because everyone who joined need to have a stable internet connection and in a decent computer, a decent computer to ensure that the learning process would be smooth sailing. I actually had a friend from Cambodia who would travel five times per week to go to the nearest school just so that she could connect to the internet there. So really shows how much serious we are sticking in this program. Besides that, due to the time differences again between classmates, 
sometimes the project work would be a bit derailed, slightly derailed, as some would already be too sleepy to focus on the discussion, and some would be online on a different time. But with the help of technology, we are able to pull through. I think this of I think of this experience as an eye opener, something that sometimes or rarely I would go through, but others would go through it almost every day. It helped us to figure out a way creatively to solve the problem that so that we could do our best. All right, so this is uh, some of the pictures that I have taken during our class online classes. And I still remember to this day how funny it went, how cheerful the classmates and the teacher were. I hope I could rewind time, but it's already passed. I'm already in this stage of acceptance. <laughs> All right, so for the, my last part, before wrapping up my part, I once again would like to give a thanks to everyone who has ensured the smoothness of today's event. And I hope we could meet physically, face-to-face, -face, again one day, striving excellence in the future. With that, I return the spotlight back to our moderator. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mujahid. You know what? Um, every cloud has a silver lining. Mm. Yes. So what the struggle you went through, um, it all... In the end, it pays off because you have still you still went through a fruitful experience. Um, you gained lots of new friends, I believe, and you have something to look forward to after this pandemic, which is to travel and meet them. Mm, so indeed, every cloud has a silver lining. Thank you. Yeah. So thank you very much, Mujahid. Terima kasih. Arigato gozaimasu. Next, moving on, let's move on. Let's travel back to our neighboring country. Uh, to the, our neighboring country in the Philippines, we have Maria Rica di Duran Babanto, who is a first year college student one of at Toyo University, Japan. So let's hear what she has to share with us this evening. The screen is yours, Maria. Yes, thank you so much, John. Um, I would like to thank the UKM Global, especially Dr. Latif, for inviting me here as your panelist. So um, I'm going to share my screen now. Yeah, is it uh, clear? Can you just see my slides? Oh, yeah, oh, so yes. I'm just going to share with you like my experience as an exchange student in University, Kebangsan, Malaysia, or UKM. So um, as a background, um, I am a graduate student with my uh, with my first degree before in the in Suleiman University, Philippines. And now currently I am a, a first year scholar student in Toyo University. And also I'm currently an exchange student in UKM. So here is, um, so if there are three words that, um, I, if there are three words that I would describe my experience, it would be like amazing, enjoyable and insightful. It's because it's been an amazing journey. And um, there were things that I, I've never expected. And um, it's very enjoyable is because uh, I've met a lot of people, like especially my classmate, they were so good. And, and insightful, it's because like my teacher really taught us a lot of things. And I'm going to discuss it later on. Um, the next one would be here, like my intercultural communication classmates. So basically, I um, uh, I enrolled in international uh, intercultural communication uh, with uh, with Doctor Latif's class, and yeah, this is me if you can see. And like most of my classmates, uh, there is Isa, Priti, Sahila, and all of them are very very nice and. Um, having them learning, you know, their environment is very um, good. It's because they really want to cooperate. They really want to engage into something. And um, I feel um, they make me feel more productive. It's because they influence me. Like they know what they want. They know what they're good at. Um, they're, they're very good at making videos or making posters and I'm not good at that. And because of, you know, this um, activities we have, they inspired me to, to, to do some stuff like that. And the next one, they have a lot of events in UKM, like um, high tea sessions, and as well as, you know, um, intercultural communication with other, um, other universities, such as in Merkabuana University in Indonesia. So they have, uh, they have a lot of events so that, uh, you know, even if we just learn uh, virtually, they really want to share um, to us, um, like the events that, uh, that uh, they, they have. 
Um, and the next one is, yeah, I just want to um, thank Dr. Latif um, for being the most inspiring teacher I had and for making um, my student ex exchange experience worthwhile. Um, there, uh, I, what they call my experience as a exchange student in UKM is very nice. It's because um, I've learned a lot of things, not just from the book, like Dr. Latif taught us not just in the book, but also in real life. So I think it's very, um, and very nice because that's what the millennial today or the generations today um, needs the most. Like they have, uh, they need to learn what, what is in, like in reality to be prepared to, uh, uh, to prepare them in, in, um, in the real world. And thank you so much, Dr. Latif, for, for inspiring me. Um, I really want to inspire others as you inspired me. So, yep. And the next one is, yeah, my, my school, Tau University. I would like to thank my school. It's because um, um, with the collaboration of the UKM, it gives me an opportunity um, to be part of this exchange student. So that's all for me. Thank you so much. Maraming salamat, Maria. You are an inspiration to us, and I wish, and I pray, and I hope that you will continue to be an inspiration to others, especially in the in Japan and also in the Philippines. So yeah, very very. Um, I'm inspired by you being a Filipino in a Japanese university and doing an exchange in a Malaysian university. That is something that wow. Yeah, wow, Maria. Okay, so thank you very much. Magandang uma. Uh, maraming salamat and yeah we, we since we also would like to acknowledge the presence of Dr. Latif is actually with us this evening uh, tuning into us so thank you so much Associate Professor Dr. Abdul Latif Ahmad and also our Deputy Director our University Coordinators and UK Global Officers for um, making this happen and for being with us this evening before we move on to our final panelists tonight uh, I'm reminding everyone to impose your questions, to kindly put your questions for our panelists to be answered later during our Q&A ses session. So if you're tuning in via Zoom or Facebook Live, you may put your questions in the chat box. All right, so let's move on to our final panelist this evening to share with us. He's none other than Mr. Yuki Nishiyori, or known as Hafiz Yuki. He is from Fukuoka in West Japan, and he's currently studying in Tokyo University of Foreign Studies. Selamat petang, selamat malam, Yuki. Selamat malam, minta maaf, Kian. Tidak mengapa. No, no internet connection. Tidak mengapa. It is something beyond our, out of our control, so no worries, don't have to be sorry. So, yes, the screen is yours to share, and we look forward. Dipersilakan, saudara. Hafiz. Okay. Boleh nampak? Nampak, nampak. Boleh. Okay. Eh, salam sejahtera. Uh, I'm Yuki Nishiori from Japan. Saya so, Yuki Nishiori. Eh, Hafiz dari Jepun. I have Malay name Hafiz. I studied in Faculty of Economics and Management for one year. I will talk about my experience in Malaysia, especially in UKM, University of Bangsa, Malaysia. Morning in the UKM starts very early. I wake up hearing a zang, Allah Akbar, and wake up. The first period uh, starts at 8 a.m. in the morning. My university in Japan, Tokyo University of Foreign Studies, starts 8.30. And my senior high school starts 9 a.m. So you came starts very early for me. Most of the classes I had were held in big hall. I tried to study, I tried to study Islamic economics and Islamic finance but it was very difficult for me. The food in UKM were very reasonable. Mura, I was able to eat at so many places in UKM, uh, such as uh, dormitory, college, Pusanika, um, 
um, that the students hall and faculty that the <laughs> the faculties uh, near the uh, ho lecture halls. Uh, UKM Bangi campus was very Burbukit. Uh, I don't know how to say in English, Burbukit. Uh, so I need to climb up and down every day, but UKM has good scenery also. And there are so many cats everywhere. And monkeys are also everywhere. So I was able to Bukawa and Dungamreka. I was able to make friends with them. So that's all. Sekian, terima kasih. Thank you for listening. Terima kasih, saudaraku Hafiz Yuki. If I may ask you, Yuki, one question, satu soalan. Mm -hmm. What is your favorite food? Makanan kegemaran anda di Malaysia? Nasi your lemak. Favorite food, nasi lemak. Pagi pagi saya makan nasi lemak. <laughs> Bukan saya, not only in the morning, in the morning, in the afternoon, at night, mm -hmm. and also for supper, right? Mm -hmm. Kedai mamak. <laughs> yes. Sampai. Arigato gozaimasu. Thank you very much, Yuki. Wonderful sharing. And yeah, so we have heard from everyone. We have heard all our panelists share some of the experiences, the uh, where they have been through, through their exchange, through their studies, and what they have been, what they are doing right now. And we will now proceed into a Q and A Q and A session where we will be moving into an active conversation, discussion with one another. So this is me reminding everyone once again to kindly um, put your questions up in the chat box, in Facebook Live and also in Zoom. And we will be addressing your questions one by one. All right, so are we ready everyone? Yes. <laughs> All right, okay. So let's have our the first question. We have one question coming from uh, Mr. Rene Babira from the University of Immaculate Conception, Philippines. would also like to um, thank all of our audience members joining us this evening. We have around close to 500 on Zoom, and I believe we have also on Facebook Live. So thank you so much, everyone, for taking time to join us this evening. So coming back to Mr. Rene's question, what are the considerations that one must take before he or she participates in any in-person mobility program, a physical mobility? And what are the common challenges that they might encounter? And what advice would you like to impart to students planning to go on mobility programs? So we have three um, things to cover. Um, your advice for a person, what must, one, what must one person prepare? What must he or she prepare before going for physical mobility? And what is a, the challenges that they might encounter and how they should overcome it. So maybe you can link this to your experience as an exchange student. So maybe we can have who would, any of our panelists would like to go first. I'm opening up the floor. Suraya. Yeah, yes, thank okay. you. Yes. Okay, thank you very much for your question also. Uh, I would like to talk about the, um, what we should prepare before the mobility program. Actually, I, yeah, I'm working in KL, but I still, this is the really important thing that I should have prepared um, before coming to here for working. Uh, it is uh, knowing deeply well about your own culture, your own society. Because yeah, if we get along with, if, if we make new friends, uh, let's say in Malaysia, they get curious why Japan is like this, why, uh, what um, we have, what, what, what we have in Japan. So then we need to explain, we should explain um, as much as we can, because it is a good opportunity for us to exchange the opinion and to understand more about us 
Malaysia and Japan. So I always think I need to study more about own country also. Yeah, so if you uh, will go to the another countries to study, I hope you guys know more about your own country culture. Yeah, it is one advice for me from, from my side. Thank you. Thank you very much, Kaoru. That was, um, thank you for taking the question. I strongly agree with you that before we go for a mobility program to, to another country, you must first understand about our culture and really know about our country. Because when we go for mobility programs, we're not only um, representing ourselves, our universities, but we're also being ambassadors of our country. And it is no doubt that people would um, identify you as an exchange student and they would, they would, they're curious. They would want to know uh, what is your culture like? Share your similarities and differences. So, yes, I agree with you that we must first know about our own culture. So, thank you, Kaoru, for taking the first part of the question. Uh, if any one of our panelists would like to add up on this, what else must we prepare before going for mobility besides um, knowing our culture? Yeah, um, can, I, I would like to intervene. Um, I think what Kaoru said makes, um, like, like, a lot of sense. Uh, and along with that, um, one of the important things that I realized when I came to um, Japan is um, to register with um, the embassy that, you know, or the immigration that you're actually here in Japan. So um, it could be, uh, you know, for example, they would want to let you know that um, to, to know your safety um, in case there is um, natural disaster, because it happens way too often here. Um, earthquake, they would send you messages. So I think that's, that's a good way to um, keep yourself moderated. Um, another thing for students, uh, make sure that your credit transfer, um, if that's possible or not, um, have a talk with your professor um, in case, you know, I mean, if you want to extend your year, I have no questions about that, but I'm sure some of you would want to get it over and done with, right? So I think having a very clear uh, communication with your professor would be um, helpful. Um, leverage the resources you have, ask people who have gone ahead of you um, when you arrive there, you know, what are some things that you may want to um, settle? For example, opening a bank account, you know, things like that, um, getting an apartment, um, so having a buddy system uh, would also be helpful in that sense. Um, so yeah, thank you. Yes, thank you, Tiffany. Communication is key to everything and it is important, it's vital that we also um, ask and not be shy and not um, keep it to ourselves because if we do not ask, then no one will help us. We can, we, we, we can only help ourselves and this is very important when you go for mobility programs is to always let people know um, what you're going through and what you need help with. And I'm sure the host university would be more than happy to assist you. And for example, in UKM, that's when uh, us as global bodies and UK ambassadors, that's our role is to ensure that your experience coming to Malaysia, coming to UKM is a fruitful one, it's a memorable one, and it's also a fun one because we understand that you're far away from home and you might feel homesick. So we want to prevent that from happening. So coming to that, have any one of you um, ever felt homesick? Yeah. And how did you overcome being homesick? Do you, yeah, you miss, did you cry in your room? Yeah. Did you, yeah. How did you overcome that? So maybe we can have um, Hidaya. Did you experience feeling homesick? Well, um all of my programs that I join are very short I would say like two weeks and um, I think the most extreme I've been away from home is uh, about three weeks but that was inbound program so um, but I, I would still say that um, homesick could also be defined as you know doing something out of your comfort zone and being away from something that you are comfortable doing and something that you are familiar with so I think that would resonate to my first mobility experience, which was the um, UKM GSMP, where we went to um, um, so a few, I think about three local students 
Um, and then we were joined by um, students from Mexico, from Hong Kong, from Korea. So we went on to these um, indigenous um, communities, which is um, very far in the outskirts. And I think that, um, uh, I wouldn't say homesick, but you know, that weird feeling where you are both you and also your friends, your foreign, your international friends are experiencing this together and you're trying to make sense of things together. So uh, I don't know what to describe, you know, how to describe that feeling, but it's, um, I would say it's bittersweet because, you know, reflecting to what um, Koru said in terms of, you know, you want to understand your own culture, but at this point of time, you are also immersing yourself in the situation and learning lots. And they're also learning a lot and just trying to make sense of things together. So, um, yeah, I don't know how, what, what, what would you label that feeling as, yeah. Yes, thank you very much, Hidayah, for sharing. Would Mujahid, Maria, or Yuki would like to add to the question or sharing on um, one thing that you have to prepare before going for mobility, the challenges that you faced, and advice that you'll give to people, to students, to yeah, motivate them to go for a mobility program? Perhaps you can have um, Maria, if you would... Oh, Mujahid can go first. All right, sure, I can. All right. Okay, for because I don't have any experience in the physical exchange program, I have only the virtual exchange program. All that I can say is that you should, if you are going an online one, you should search, um, search the official page of the regarding universities, such as in Facebook or in Twitter, so that you could at least have the chance to ask question other than your university country, home university country, of course, with the targeted uni university country. Because some of the, like Miss uh, Tiffany Tang said that um, about the credit transfer, which was a bit of a hassle, especially online, that, but I could, I could solve it because I had the connection, I had the information that I searched upon before going on the exchange program. And during the exchange program, of course, you need to make sure that you add everyone in your classroom or in your courses, people that participate in your courses, add everyone in a group so that you could communicate even better after classes. Because trust me, during classes, everyone would be talk very talkative. But when there's such as project work, people tend to like ignore it until the next class, next class come and it would cause a bit of problem. That's why I think that's all for me, right? Yes. Thank you, Mujahid. Now let's take um, another question. We'll take a question from Dr. Crescenti Exur Barcelona from the Philippines. On a personal level, on a more personal level, can you share very briefly your experience uh, before, during, and after the mobility? So how was your feelings before and after before, during, and after uh, performing the mobility program. So may I invite uh, Haf Hafiz Yuki to share his feelings before going for mobility, coming to UKM, and going back to Japan. How was your feeling? Uh, about uh, my study, uh, uh, before uh, going to Malaysia, I was very comfortable with my uh, Malay language and uh, Islamic studies. Uh, however, uh, during UKM, the class was very um, high level and at all, all, all students except for me are uh, uh, Muslim people. So uh, no, there should be some uh knowledge uh or they already know so i felt i really need to study a lot and actually one year is not uh, sufficient that to go so i i go back to japan and continue to study islamic studies and now writing my graduation thesis about islamic finance so like that Thank you very much, uh, Hafiz Yuki, for sharing your feelings.
before, during, and after performing your mobility. Next, we'll take a question from Tirso Renante. So based on your experience, um, how could you encourage an individual to join a mobility program or to study abroad? So may I invite uh, Maria to take this question? How would you um, encourage a student to go out of the comfort zone, to spread their wings and to travel in, to study in a different university abroad? Yes, thank you, John. Um, yeah, I think um, just what like John said, um, if you just uh, go out from your comfort zone, it's really, you know, there's an opportunity beyond it and I should, you should grab it because as for me, um, I came from, you know, um, a, a family, a family where, where um, respect is, is measured by success and that what uh, um, opted me to join um, international mobility and um, there, are, um, there are a lot of things that you can do. Um, yeah, and I just want you to, you know, to, to do whatever you want to do. And if, if you are um, aiming for self-growth, then go for it. And um, yeah, maybe there's a lot of um, things that is in store for you if you, have, if you just join in this kind of program. Yes, that's all for me. Thank you. Thank you, Maria. And there's actually a follow-up question to that. Uh, um, this question is directly um, imposed to you from Robert Salvador. How do you overcome to adjust as an exchange student? And what was your strategy or how do you value diversity being a Filipino, perhaps? Mm -mm. Okay, I, I see. So, um, and, and as, and as an, ah, as an, oh my God, um, as a, like, as an exchange student in UKM, um, the culture in UKM and in, in the Philippines are very similar. Um, and I think I don't have any, um, like, culture shock and uh, I value diversity is, is you know inc just increase your level of understanding about um, other cultures um, and you know interacting with them and just be proactive in listening and accepting as well as welcoming people that are different from your own mm -mm. Yes, very well said Maria and this all um, leads to us being global competent and understanding the cultural, the differences that we have each other, not just focusing. This is when we should focus on our similarities and not focus on our differences because we being in um, Asia, we have other, our similarities and we should really leverage on focusing on that and not um, go about our differences and comparing each other. Yes. So thank you, Maria. Now, um, let's ask a question to our panelists who have gone for physical mobility. What are the cultural take-home messages that you learned while you were being abroad? And maybe you can share um, an interesting place that you found in that host country, a place that you cannot forget or you've, you've been thinking of it. It's, it's still fresh in your mind up till today after two years of being um, going through COVID. So maybe we can first invite uh, Tiffany to share and maybe Kauru can also share after this. Yeah, Yeah, sure. Thank you so much for that. Um, I think it's a very valuable question. Um, and I'd like to just bring that to one of my favorite phrases from this book called The Cultural Map by Erin Mayer. Some of you may know this. Um, and she says, just as fish don't know they're in water, people often find it difficult to see and recognize their own culture until they start comparing it with others. So this is something that I kind of base um, my all my culture shock events on, I think, um, you know, being in Japan really helps me to realize um, how uh, time management is something that they, they hold very, very highly. So um, the, the idea of linear time, believing in, you know, having sequence, uh, sequential steps, um, being prompt, um, having strict deadlines. So those are um, very, um, very interesting shifts. Um, to what I knew before, um, but it, it's good. I, I think it's um, character building 
in, in a sense. And um, in relation to your latter question on some interesting places that um, I visited, I think um, Kagawa Prefecture, when, I'm not sure if any of the panelists have been there. Um, it's the smallest prefecture in Japan. They have an island that hosts only about a thousand people. So everyone knows everyone. So you gotta be careful what you say and do. Uh, but I, I really enjoy, um, it's called Teshima Art Museum. Um, yeah, it, it's beautiful. I also, I also love Amami Island. Um, I can go on and on, but um, I think I should let the rest speak. Thank you. Thank you very much, Tiffany. Very well said. Now we have heard from um, a Malaysian going to Japan. Now let's do vice versa. How about uh, from a Japanese coming to Malaysia? So what um, take home, cultural take home messages that you uh, managed to bring well bring home while you learn while you were abroad? And what interesting place did you find out in Malaysia, Suraya, Kauru? All right. Actually, I'm really happy to hear uh, Kagawa Prefecture from Tiffany. Uh, Kagawa Prefecture is really famous for udon. Do you know udon? The noodle. Very famous. You should try it. <laughs> then, so what I learned from my um, stay in UKM is actually how to be um, how to be sopan and homati, how to be sopan. Um, what, what do you say, sopan? Polite. Polite, yes, yes. polite and respect to the, um, with, to the people with care about the various religion. Because uh, in Japan, um, maybe you guys also know that, um, people in Japan tend to think about we are the same. So we don't care so much about the another religion because we think we are the same. Actually, we are not, but we tend to think that. So uh, how to intentionally respect, uh, to, to show our respect and um, yeah, respect to another people is really new to me. So let's say like, uh, Maybe in front of the Muslim friends, I don't wear the sexy, sexy clothes. And also, of course, uh, in front of the Hindu friends, I, I hesitate to eat beef together. So of course, in front of the um, Malay people, I never drink alcohol, something like that. So we can take care of the lifestyle um, to the, um, to the, with the care about uh, various thoughts and values. So it is really good lesson for me even now. Yeah, okay. So um, what is the uh, interesting spot in Malaysia? I would definitely say Mama. Mama, uh, it is totally interesting place because everyone can eat together. Uh, every food is so delicious. So I think everyone can not, yeah. Thank you. Yes. Thank you very much, Kaoru. Mamak is where everyone comes together. Everyone <laughs> will go there when they're stressed. Exam week, watch a football match. It brings yeah, the yeah, whole yeah, yeah, nation yeah. together. Mm. Yeah. And yeah, Mamak is where you can have uh, Yuki's favorite food, nasi lemak, morning, night, any time of the day. Yeah. And yeah, um, this is when, if I can add up to what both of you just shared, uh, it's all about adapting to situations, environments, cultures which are not normal to us, which are, we are not um, used to. So adapting, adapting, adapt. Like it's how we're adapting to this new normal, this new, um, yeah, what COVID has done to us. This, we have to accept the fact that this is the new normal. We cannot be complaining that I miss physical mobility. I want to go out. I want to go out. No, we cannot um, do that because we have to accept that this is the new normal and it's about adapting to change. So remember everyone, um, Kanagawa Prefecture, that's the best udon, and go to Mamak for your nasi lemak. Yeah, I did a rhyme there. Okay. <laughs> All right, so now let's um, take a question from the floor. Uh, from, yeah, I like this question uh, from Mr. Julian O'Donnell. Did you experience culture shock? Mm, so did any of you, um, did you experience culture shock while being abroad? And how did you overcome the situation of being far away from home 
knowing the hindrances and obstructions caused by COVID-19. Maybe perhaps um, Mujahid could share if he experience, yeah, if you experience any culture shock um, being online, being with different cultures and yeah, how did COVID-19 affect the experience? Yeah. All right. So, well, because I'm doing it online, I don't, I don't think that there's the pandemic would cause much. I mean, would cause much towards the program, but I could see that people would tend to more be burnt out because of the lack of sunlight, because the lack of going out to where we used to do before the pandemic have started. And the thing is that in I could say that during the program, there's not tons of culture shock that happened, but I could I could feel that the pressure that being that the the pressure of doing it online, it causes that people to neglect their mental health, neglect their physical health because due to the screen time that we are having almost 10 to 12 hours, especially doing the classes in UKM, doing the classes in TFS, people didn't realize that they neglect of it. And then we should really take care of ourselves because we aren't just trying to strive in excellence in academics. We, at the same time, want to ensure that our mental health, physical health is at top notch. I think that's all from me, yeah. Thank, Thank you, you Mujahid, for sharing. Now we have heard from a physical mobility uh, from an online mobility perspective. Now let's look at the physical mobility perspective. Um, maybe I could ask uh, Hafiz Yuki, did you experience any culture shock coming to Malaysia, coming to UKM? And um, how did you overcome that um, the shock, the, that feeling of culture shock? Uh, when I went to UKM, actually it was the maybe fourth time I went to Malaysia <laughs> and before going to UKM every day I learned about anything in Malaysia so when I was in UKM there is no culture shock but uh, when I first time uh, went to Malaysia uh, I was surprised uh, because uh, Many, many people in Malaysia are not, not so punctual. So, um, but, so, uh, um, uh, before going to UKM, uh, I felt it would, that would be a very problem. But after going, during my stay in UKM, I didn't feel any problem uh, not being punctual. So uh, I don't know how to <laughs> overcome culture shock, but mm, mm, like that. And at all. by the way, I, I strongly recommend uh, you to take physical education class uh, because I, at all, in economics class, it was the lecture, so uh, there are not so many opportunity to talk with other students, but uh, physical education class has so many uh, opportunity to uh, communicate with others. So I strongly recommend you to take uh, other than lectures, physical education, music and art like that. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Hafiz Yuki, for sharing. Moving on to the next question, uh, I would like to ask uh, Hidayah. I believe our audience members, we have students, two students who are looking for inspiration to go for mobility programs or um, hearing from you. Um, yeah, they might be something that is stopping them from going for mobility. So in your opinion, uh, what are the factors that is hindering students' participation in going for a mobility or even an exchange program, be it short-term or even long-term? Right. Um, I think in this situation, most of us, when I think firstly, 
when you see an opportunity comes your way, you usually question yourself whether you are good enough to grab that opportunity. So I think one of those things that are hindering um, people who wants to who want to go for these mobility programs is um, they feel that um, they feel inadequate. But I would say that um, you never know if you never try. So once you see the opportunity um, and you see, um, and uh, I understand that um, for some of the mobility programs, they are based on um, recommendation or nominations, right? So um, sometimes we have these um, thoughts or, you know, you, you think to yourself um, that even though someone nominated you, someone recommended you, you, you don't feel that, you know, you are, you, you are good enough to go for it. But I think when someone trusted you, you know, in a, in a way, they, they, they trust that you can do it, then I think you should uh, impart some of those confidence onto yourself and grab the opportunity and uh, just go with it. Um, yeah, so I, I wouldn't say that that's, that's a big obstacle, but, you know, it's more on um, mentally and also your emotional, um, you know, because sometimes when this kind of opportunity comes your way, uh, there's a mixed feeling about it. Um, like I said before, because you are going out of your comfort zone and you're not too sure what's, what's ahead of you. So you have all these questions in your head. So yeah, I say that um, my advice would be just go for it. Because right. you never know if you never, never try. try. Very true. And if I may um, continue the question, uh, do you think financial constraint is a major um factor why students are not going for mobility because they're thinking about the cost um, you, even though there's scholarships and all fundings and all but you have to also um, leverage on your daily expenses on other yes. expenses as well so what's your take on this Hidayah? Yes um, definitely um, I think that could be one of the biggest obstacle or challenges that um, one needs to overcome first but I think with, with enough um, preparation and also enough um, research then you know because once you want to do something and then you start looking for um, means financial means um, so for example you could ask for a scholarship you could ask for um, uh, how do I say like um, uh, funding from your faculty from your universities so I believe there are, there are ways to it so um, this kind of thing they come with planning so I think you know once you know what you want to do and then you, I, you have identified all these challenges, then uh, I believe that there are um, means to it, you know? Very true. Because when there's a will, there will always be a way and nothing is impossible because everything is possible. Yeah. Yes. So thank you, Hidayah, for sharing. Now we have that we have heard from a Malaysian. Now let's um, hear from perhaps Kauru. What could be stopping Japanese students um, wanting to go outside of Japan? Because Japan is already so, yeah, it's, it's already so good. Um, education day, you can only, so what might be stopping Japanese mm. students from doing, from going abroad to, to continue their studies? Mm. Okay, thank you. Actually, I really agree with um, Hidayah. And she mentioned that the, sometimes we are less confident to try new things. So I totally think yeah, it is true. Then actually this point is really for Japanese people. I mean, Japanese people sometimes really less confident to go out because we need to, um, how to say, we need to be strong to go step beyond to another countries where we need to talk in another countries. English, of course, there may be another languages. So sometimes, yeah, actually, this, this is including me. I was also um, less confident to, to proceed with the um, exchange uh, using the another language. It is quite challenging us for us. And yeah, then one another thing is maybe we have the fear to try new things, fear to um, we feel hard, of course, to absorb new things, get used to unfamiliar things. So we are in Japan is the small the island, then we, we speak 
Japanese language all the time, then we think we are in the same culture. So sometimes some people really scared to try to 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 face with another realities in another world. So it is one thing, one challenge, one obstacle for Japanese people to try new new stuff. Yeah. Thank you very much, Kaoru, for sharing. And yeah, uh, we should not feel scared, or we should not feel that um, mm. we would be not, we won't be enough. We will never be enough, and we should always try and forge ourselves to go out of your comfort zone. Because if you yeah. stay in your comfort zone, if you always stay comfortable, they will end up um feeling monotonous in a way. There is nothing. There is no new experience. There is nothing new that you um, yeah. It's life is all about trying new things. Mm. Mm. So okay. thank you very much, Shidaya and Kauru, for giving your insights on this. Moving on, we have a question um for Maria. It is from uh, Stefan Petalkorin. As an exchange student in UKM, and um going through uh. Online mobility. How did you adapt to this new mode of learning? Thank you so much for the question. Um, actually, um, um, I am having a hard time to adapt with online learning. Um, most especially, um, you know, as an as a international student in Japan, um, I um, there's also a question here in the chat. Like, uh, I, I'm just going to relate the two questions. So. Uh, being an exchange student during the pandemic and living far away from your hometown. Um, so basically, I am in my hometown and I couldn't travel yet in Japan. It's because of their entry ban. So um, basically, I just I just spent my um, whole first year here and here in the Philippines with ha having online classes. And sometimes um, I feel sad or I'm having like um, anxiety because um, even though it's you know. I have a privilege. I'm very lucky to have uh, to be a scholarship student, but at the same time, I'm very. Um, it's very unfortunate that I cannot experience it. So, yeah. Um, to answer your um questions, um, I'm having a hard time to adapt. It's because um, I think that that I have like um a new opportunity, but I couldn't enjoy it. Yeah, that's it. Thank you very much, Maria. Moving on to our next question. Uh, this is for Mujahid. So, the virtual and online mobility has given a chance for students who are unable to travel abroad um, due to travel restrictions and financial constraints a chance to do a mobility, basically saving up money on travel expenses and such. So, in your opinion, um, should the should virtual mobilities be continued when the pandemic ends? Because we understand that we are slowly travel restrictions are slowly getting eased and we already can travel provided we are vaccinated and quarantined. So do you think that, um, judging from your experience, um, did you get the same experience that you would have gotten performing a physical mobility when attending an online mobility? And do you think that it should be continued uh, in the future? All right. Thank you for the question, John. Well, I totally agree that the virtual program to be continued even after the pandemic ends. But the key point is to use virtual program as an exposure so that the students will be able to make themselves comfortable with the idea of exchange program. It doesn't need to be as long as mine, like one year. I mean, just maybe just two weeks or one week before continuing it physically. I could see the potential of it. I, it I could see the potential of it in a long run, I guess, because as long as the participant wants to do so, in my opinion, if there's demand for it, there's totally going to be supply for it. So yeah, I once again, I say that I totally agree with the points. As long as it, it's just a short extent, not as long as mine, and it's just as an exposure before continuing to do it physically. Yes, that's my take. Thank you very much, Mujahid. We'll take the next question. Uh, this is perhaps for those our panelists who have spent one year doing mobility. 
So this is a question from one of our student buddies in UKM, Kuroshini. Good evening, panelists. My question is, during your exchange program, have you ever felt demotivated halfway? And how did you come overcome to complete it successfully? So perhaps we can um, ask um, Tiffany to share since you did a one-year program, right? Mm. Yeah. Um, so I think that's a that's a really good question because all of us here have um, experienced very um, interactive challenges in terms of our academic. For example, what um, Mujahid said, right, about um, how how the grading systems are also very different, um, that you have to prove yourself in every class. It's not sufficient just being present. You need to proactively involve in discussion, um, you know, social challenges, making friends, um, financial issues as well, uh, managing this new concept of money, right? Because at home, you don't have to. It's, it's not part of your responsibility, but now you have to pay your own bills. So there they're all, um, you know, very understandable. So leading up to feelings of isolation and things like that are very normal. Um, and personally, how I cope with that is having a strong support system. So it means having a network of um, Malaysians around. Um, in Japan, we have this organization called MSHA, uh, Malaysian Students Association Japan. Um, and they conduct, you know, uh, a lot of activities. Well, right now, because of COVID, I think it has dwindled, but um, they do meet online on and off. Um, or just having friends from, you know, sharing similar backgrounds, um, social activities, um, or even faith, you know, could be a way for you to um, stay motivated. Um, because I think what's lacking is that community that you had in Malaysia. But right now, because of, you know, all these cultural differences, it could pose um, very um, challenging times for um, mobility students, but um, I hope um, it would be um, a great avenue for you to discover yourself, the things that you think you're, you weren't capable enough to do, um, you're actually strong enough. So um, yeah, that's just my take. And I completely agree with you, Tiffany, that we should have a strong support system in, yeah, because when we are doing mobility, when we are being international students, we are alone, like what you said. We are a minority among the majority. And this is when, for example, for Malaysian, stu for Malaysian students who are going to Japan, this is when you, sh uh, you should get in touch with the other Malaysian students who are studying in Japan. Because you basically you're on the same boat and you can share um, your problems, your experiences and what you're facing and in a way, um, cheer, up, cheer on each other. Mm. So yeah, thank you, Tiffany, for sharing. Um, let's go back to uh, Mujahid, one year online. So did you feel demotivated halfway going through online mobility and how did you overcome it? Oh, yes. Oh, my God. I can't imagine how many times that I felt so... It's not like hopeless, but fatigue, I guess. When Even though it's online class, but... Just as like I said, because of the blue screen, of the time screen that you had to face every day, it felt like sometimes it comes to the point that I felt that I want to end this much earlier than I, I was supposed to. But I realized that the first, what, the first thing that motivates me to join this exchange program, because of course I had that spirit, I had the chance to go to Japan. But other than that, I want to pursue my career in that in the Japanese language, so that I could be someone we have would have high profile career, of course. That's why sometimes I think that um, people do neglect about that, the thing that I have spoken before, which is physical health, mental health, in pursuing the career, but to overcome it, you need to ensure that you have friends to talk with, at least just for like 10 minutes, someone that who could relate to the hardship that you're going through right now currently or someone that you have deeply emotions with such as your parents your best friends ensure that you have at least a communication at least once per day so that to ensure that your mental health is still cycling around instead of just in just instead of just traveling into the void or something i think that the online classes really teach me to be more empathetic with other people because I need to realize that it's not, 
I'm the only one that's going through this experience, especially the pandemic. Some people will be burdened by financially, mentally. So that going through this, I realized that people need to help each other just by using your phone, asking them, how are you today? Are you okay? Ensuring that at least by giving, by providing positive vibes, you will get the same vibes again, when, especially when you need it. Yeah, that's all. Thank you, Mujahid. It's all, yeah, it's all about checking up on each other and also self-care is most important. We have to always take care of ourselves first and also check up on others. There is a question for you, a follow-up question, Mujah, Mujahid. What do you think must be done to maintain dynamic, dynamic engagement in virtual exchange programs or in virtual programs like this? Oh, okay. To, to achieve the dynamics of virtual program, you need to ensure that you, as an individual, would like to cooperate with other people, especially your classmates, your senses, your lecturers, by ensuring that you participate in the classes every day, opening up your webcam by at least um, giving one question per courses. It shows that you really want to, to be in that class. And at the same time, it gives like a sign of respect towards others during the class during the classes that has been going through because um, I realized that being passive or being quiet won't help you, especially on online classes. Even though you aren't joining any exchange program, even it is included during your university's courses that you need to be more proactive, especially in online classes if compared to physically because in like, like right now, we are currently seeing each people faces due to people open up the webcam. But if you are being passive by, by closing your webcam and just by muting your mic, it shows that maybe you aren't even there. <laughs> maybe that people won't acknowledge your, uh, your existence in the class. That would cause, would cause like a big of a uh, rundown in the long run for the classes that you are participated in. Yeah, so you need to make sure that you always be proactive in your classes. Mm, and I cannot agree more, Mujahi, that even um, be it online classes or online meetings, when we turn on our cameras and we are able to see each other, it makes such a huge difference. And sadly, in online classes, university students, uh, even yeah, students in general, we tend to not turn on our cameras because no one is turning on. So we don't feel the urge to turn on. And this would leverage, this would cause us to lie down, do other things, and this would definitely um, make a bad um, ne ne negative impact towards our learning. So to maintain dynamic engagement in virtual exchange programs or meetings in a way, whatever ex online activities is to be active and is to be present. And you have to really um, want to show that you want to you are participative. Yes. Maria would like you would, would you like to add up on this? Yes, um, uh, and in regards with uh, Perishini's answer, I just want to share that um, my my journey as a as a, as an international student was not smooth. It's because um, I applied for the scholarship four times, so basically I failed three times. And whenever I feel um, um unmotivated in my um, in my school or in my classes, most especially Japanese. So it's very important if you really want to, you know, to uh, to study in in Jap in Japan, you must really um, uh, really advance learning Japanese because it's very um, it's a big factor in order to study in Japan. So whenever I feel um, unmotivated, I just, you know, I just look back um, why I started this one. I just look back um, the progress that I made along the way. So that, that, that is my motivation, you know, on just staying, um, staying um, in track. Um, and then I just really want to, you know, to make a best progress of myself to have a self growth. So yeah, that's all. Thank you very much, Maria. Uh, a question for uh, Hafiz Yuki. Um, did you um, 
Did you ever feel demotivated throughout your visits to Malaysia? And how did you overcome it? Um, same question earlier. Yes. Uh, I'm really full motivated to spend time in Malaysia. So I didn't have problem in that. But about um, studying, uh, my especially studying Islamic economics and Islamic finance, uh, I, I need to be more um, I I was really it uh, losing confidence, so I need to uh, be more confident in Malaysia. So I started to take physical education class and it uh, Atma, uh, Malay language class, and Ma. Uh, I tried to do many things to. Uh, uh, be confident with me. So, ma, you can do, you can try many things during your stay. Mm, thank you, Yuki. And I, yeah, it's all about um, taking care of ourselves and bringing ourselves up. And whenever we feel stress, do something that you like. Um, go for a walk go for go jogging it's all about um like for you yuki you went for physical ed class and yeah that's a message for us all that whenever we feel stress or we are, feel that we have um burned out then that's a that's the perfect timing the exact timing it's a message for us to take a break relax and yeah get back to work after you have done that because taking a break never hurts won't hurt mm. uh we are at Time is not on our side, unfortunately. Uh, we can take a few more questions, I believe. But I would like to um, ask, impose these questions to Hidaya, Kauru, and Tiffany. While going through mobility programs, you have definitely gained lots of international experience. So in your opinion, how does this contribute to your personal and professional development? How has it helped you to be where you are today? For example, Tiffany, your, your Malaysian based in Japan, Kauru, J Japanese, based in Malaysia, and then Hidayah, you with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. So how did your international involvement shape to the person that you are today? Perhaps you can start with Hidayah first. Thank you, John. Um, I think personally, um, a lot of us, when we go through these kind of experiences, um, once the experience ended, we always ask ourselves, what do we make do you know, of this experience? How, how do I make it um, an added value to, to your course, to your career path? And for me, um, if we're talking at a personal level, is that I, uh, from through these mobility programs, I got to know about intercultural awareness, about the importance of um, uh, intercultural sensitivity, and all these words like um, internationalization, I was introduced to this only from um, all these programs. And I think it created um, uh, a sense of um, curiosity for me. So I use the opportunities to interact, to understand and to ask questions. And I think it circles back to what John has said earlier on in terms of how you use social media to um, get in touch with your friends. And I think, um, for some of us, um, we do still keep in touch with our friends who we went on for the mobility programs together, the friends that we make. And I think that uh, it, it calls for a continued education in a sense that you are always talking to them about new things um, uh, back in their home country. So I think it also goes into how you get to explore your interests um, uh, from your exposure. So for me personally, um, from my interaction with the uh, Mexican students, I, I found out that I'm very curious about um, the Spanish language. So I am currently on my second year of learning Spanish. Um, so that's something, and I've always, and it's, and before this, I haven't had any, uh, I haven't thought about, you know, all, all these bucket list places to visit before you die and whatnot. So right now I, I, I have one place, which is Mexico. Um, right, uh, and then I think in terms of professionally, I would say that, 
um, going into the um, the line of work that I am in right now, specifically doing counterterrorism, is that I, I keep thinking of to myself like how, how do I integrate this experience and also in the line of work. Uh, but to my surprise, is um, during the first week of um, uh, you know reporting in, um, they gave me a bunch of reading materials, and it was something along the lines of the role of education in countering violent extremism. And when I was reading it, um, so it was saying that how um, volunteerism, mobility programs, sports, arts and culture could be one of those medium for people to, you know, uh, be more, uh, to have more positive outlook. You know, we are, we are always all too caught up in the differences and not the similarities. So I think uh, with that experience and also the curiosity I had in, um, so I kind of um, trying to merge that into the work, uh, in my uh, line of work right now. So I'm doing uh, youth and peace narratives, peace building, and I'm hearing a lot of words like respect, um, learning about other differences today. And uh, I'm so happy that, you know, this is all an experience that we all feel and definitely something to think about in, in my line of work. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Hidaya. Uh, can we go to Kauru first and then to Tiffany? Hi, thank you for the really important question to me, to my life. Actually, um, everything that I encountered during the stay in UKM um, was what I am right now. Uh, it's making what I am now. Um, personally, I really like Malaysia. That's why I'm here. I got the opportunity to work for Embassy of Japan to promote something in Japan to Malaysian people. So when it comes to promotion of Japan to Malaysian people, um, I really need to know about Malaysian people first, what they like, what they want to listen from us, what they expect Japan to, to, to do to Malaysia. So everything that I, I learned uh, in UKM was the, uh, it's the really important knowledge for me to proceed with my job right now. Then also, uh, it is about my career, right? But in terms of the personal life, also, I already connected strongly with Malaysian society. I really like here. So um, yeah, actually, actually, everything is already in my, yeah, inside um, myself. So yeah, I actually, it's quite difficult to uh, explain, but yeah, it is what I am right now. Thank you. Thank you very much, Suraya. Next, uh, Tiffany. Yeah. Um, so going back to your question about how it develops me personally and professionally, um, let me begin. Uh, personally, I think um, being able to read the air. Um, if, if you're a Japanese, I think you know what I'm talking about, because um, Japan is a very high context society. So sometimes they don't say what they really mean. And uh, we have to go around the bush and, you know, figure out um, what they really want us to do or say. And um, it's very challenging. But um, I think that's how um, respect is um, being translated in that society. So um, it's very interesting to me, even until today, being here almost about four years. Um, and, and I need to gain, um, well, I, I had the opportunity to, to gain unbiased opinions on things, because um, my background was in peace and conflict. So every day we talk about um, you know, humanitarian assistance, for example, how are we going to, um, you know, be able to calibrate that to the people in need and, and on these topics, you have very diverging thoughts and opinions. So how are you able to possibly decrease yourself so that the world around you can evolve, you know, in a sense, and um, even right now, um, I'm acquainted with my professor. So I'm actually in Hiroshima right now, which some of you know, it's a very pivotal um, place where the concept of peace um, 
had a turning point in Japan. Um, so um, I think that's something really meaningful for me as well. Uh, professionally, I think I had um, various engage engagements with um, multiple volunteering activities or even internships, uh, which really gave me an opportunity to contribute back to Japan, who has really, you know, blessed me with so much of um, experience. So, um, yeah, that's that's just my two cents. Thank you. Thank you very much, Tiffany, Garu, and Hidayah for sharing your insights and thoughts on that question. So, let's hear one. Uh, we'll take one last question very quickly for Mujahid, Maria, and Yuki. What has the mobility experience taught you? What have you learned? What is that one thing that you have learned or yeah, the mobility going and in, going on an international mobility taught you? Maybe we can start with uh, Maria first. Mm -mm. Yeah, yeah. I think the, the number one or the, the primary lessons that I learned is um, I have to believe in myself. Like that's what the student mobility um, taught me. Um, I can, I, I, I've met and I've interacted with a lot of students from um, different um, nationalities and um, they really inspired me to, to just, you know, go out, go out from your shell and um, to really fly high and there's no time for, sh uh, for being shy and you just have to, um, you just have to, you know, spread your wings and um, yeah, I think um, it's really nice because I was I was a shy person before and I'm very conscious about my English and um, I really did my best, you know, on how to um, how to develop it. And yeah, I think um, I think with this um, student mobility, um, it taught me a lot of things, um, especially on how to um, on how to believe in myself. Yeah. Thank you, Maria. Mujahid? All right, John. Well, the, the most important thing that I've learned from this exchange program is to realize that we need to, we need to put ourselves in other people's shoes. Because like I said that some people that currently joining the online exchange program have difficulties of having a stable internet and the computer and the hardware that they are using are really like not decent kind of one. So it costs a bit of disruption during the classes and everything, but we need to realize that not everyone is really fortunate to join even the online exchange program, especially online exchange program, especially after the after the like the pandemic started that suddenly stops almost everything from happening physically, moving from one country to another country. And I realized that being empathetic would help you go a long way, especially when you could realize that other people are going through hardships too, instead of the only one that you're focusing right now, it's only you. And I think that people should realize that we need to help each other because we are a society that is really social and we are not just focusing on one individual aspect. We need to live as a collaborative species. That's all, that's my take. Thank you, Mujahid, and finally, Yuki Japan. Yes. Uh, eto, I have two things to share. Uh, one thing is uh, studying abroad is, I think, very it's very good opportunity to uh, think about yourself and know about yourself. Because uh, studying abroad, uh, you will you will be uh, long, so long time uh, you will be uh, you will be surrounded uh, different uh, environment from your normal daily life so it's very good op opportunity to talk uh, to yourself and know about yourself and one other thing is uh, it's same with uh, job hunting, um, but uh, the most important thing is uh, being confident with yourself. Uh, if uh, when losing uh, confidence, uh, you are no, no, not you will be not 
active. So you need to be confident and active to uh, uh, not to lose uh, time. Time is money. That's it. Thank you very much, Hafiz Japan. With that, with that, it we have come. With that said, we have come to the end of our webinar series for tonight. And if I may conclude, students' involvement in international mobility pro programs can definitely and has enhanced graduate attributes that are highly valued by future employers. Physical mobility virtual mobility or even hybrid mobility, these are all opportunities to be globally competent and for us to become holistic individuals in the future. Once again, thank you everyone for joining us tonight. And on behalf of UKM Global, we would like to express our heartfelt thanks and sincere gratitude to our panelists for sharing their insights, opinions, and views on the topic tonight, especially Tiffany, Yuki, Kauru, Hidayah, Mujahid, and Maria. Thank you very much. Arigato gozaimasu. Maraming salamat. And ladies and gentlemen, I have a very special announcement to make. So some of you may or may not know, this is actually a webinar series supported by um, organized by UKM Global, supported by Toshiba International Foundation. And today's, today's the sixth series, and today we have hit a record attendance. So today's attendance has broke all the past records of the Tosh Toshiba webinar series. So congr congratulations, everyone. Um, this is history in the making. We have reached over 600 registrations, close to 700 and at least 500 people viewing simultaneously, um, almost a thousand, I think, both in Facebook and Zoom. So thank you so much, everyone. And on we, this would not possibly um, be happening if it weren't for Toshiba International Foundation. And we sincerely hope that ties between higher learning institutions around the world, especially um, Japan, Malaysia, and the Philippines will be further strengthened and enhanced. And this can definitely be done through international mobility programs. This is John Sebastian, thank you, your moderator for tonight. And with that, I would like to pass back to our MC, Sarah. All right. Thank you very much, John. Thank you so much to the panelists for such an inspiring discussion tonight. That was a great sharing of best practices from everyone. I hope that we will each bring back the best practices shared by the panelists in facing the challenges of undergoing student mobility, either virtually or physically, while enriching the internalization at our own institutions. Ladies and gentlemen, we have now approached at the end of our webinar. On behalf of the organizer, we would like to thank the panelists today for their cooperation in realizing today's event. Not forgetting the International Office of Local Universities, our partner universities from across the globe, the embassy representatives, and also the technical team from the Faculty of Medicine, UKM, for the technical support. Please kindly fill in the feedback form upon leaving the webinar. Once completed, you'll receive your e-certificate for attending the webinar. For those watching live streaming via Facebook, the link for the feedback form will be shared soon. Once again, thank you for, very much for your time, and we hope to see you again in our future webinars. All in all, thank you very much. Terima kasih, arigato, and salamat. Till we meet again in our future webinars, stay safe.